Hello friends, if you're part of the family, welcome back. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. We started um, the study on the books, on the fundamentals of the faith uh, a few weeks ago, and we're going to pick up right where we left off. Um, last week we finished, I think, I think we were, we did the last, let me see, we we're talking about the Old Testament, the 39 books of the Old Testament, and we left off, I think, in the uh, poetry books, if I'm not mistaken. And today we're going to pick it up with the major prophets, okay? So just a summary, which um, if you're interested, just uh, there's a playlist um, here on my YouTube channel called Fundamentals of the Faith. You can go check it out so you can uh, see the first two videos. One is an intro and the other one where we actually start uh, the first chapter in the book. And right below in the description box, you can find a link to where you can get the study um, and have access to the videos uh, that are available in the um, in the web website, Grace to You. Um, there are audio, not videos, audios that are available uh, for each of these lessons that go way deeper uh, than what I'm doing. Um, but anyways, let's pick up right where we left off, which was, which were the major prophets. So we went through the Pentateuch, which are the first five books. We went through the history books. We went through the poetry books. Um, and now we're gonna do the major prophets going through the 39 books in the Old Testament, okay? So the major books are five books um, and a prophet. So he gives a definition of what a prophet is according to scripture. So a prophet was a person commissioned by God to deliver his message to men. So someone who God chose, uh, they didn't choose themselves, they weren't like, here I am God, no, God chose them um, to be able to convey a message to men. Men as in like um, everyone, men and women, okay? Like humanity, all right? Um, these books are called major prophets because they generally are longer than the writings of the minor prophets. So it doesn't mean that they're better and that they're cooler and that, you know, God used them more. No, it's just because of the length, pretty much, of each of these books, okay? So that's why uh, major prophet, minor prophet, and we're going to go into which ones are the minor prophets. The major prophets were written uh, approximately between 750 and 500 BC. And again, I mentioned this in the first video that I love how we have evidence um, where we have copies of copies of copies, actually thousands of copies of scripture. And um, so we have evidence for what we have here um, that we study as God's word. Okay, so that's the time frame that they were written. And the books are as following. They are Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, um, Hosea, no, five, up, up to there, up to Daniel, sorry. So Isaiah... Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. That is five, okay? Um, then we go on to the Minor Prophets, which are 12 books. The last 12 books of the Old Testament were written approximately between 840 and 400 BC, okay? And these are the books. If I butcher these names, I am sorry. <laughs> okay, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Nahum, Habakkuk, Habakkuk uh, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. Okay, those are uh, the twelve minor prophets. All right, so this brings us to uh, the second section in this chapter, um, where we talk about the New Testament. So the Old Testament had thirty-nine books, or has thirty-nine books. The New Testament um, has 27. And there was a gap of about four or 500 years, if I'm not mistaken, between Malachi, which was the last book written, and um, uh, Matthew, which was the first book written in the New Testament. There was like four or 500 uh, years of silence where there was no prophet that spoke new revelation, nothing. Um, they just had the scriptures, the Old Testament to, to go by, okay? So here we are, the New Testament. Um, and the New Testament, or they also call the New Covenant, reveals Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of men. And we had talked about, especially well in the first video in the intro, 
um, that we just see this continual, um, yes, the sub continual subject and theme of scripture is Christ, Jesus Christ, the Redeemer for our sins. And it is like a common thread where each book is uh, weaved together. Like this thread is just weaved together through all of these books, through the Pentecost, through um, the the poet, poetry book, through the history books, through the major and the minor project pro prophets that you see all of this. And throughout the Old Testament, which I don't know why I'm saying it, but later we'll go on to it. It is foretold of this Christ, this Redeemer, this Messiah that is going to come. So all the Jewish people, the Israelites, the, the Jewish nation knew about this Messiah that was coming that they were waiting for. Okay, um, so now here we are in the, in the New Testament and um, in it we find the life of Christ, the way of salvation, the beginning of Christianity, right? Uh, the instruction for Christian living and God's plan for the future. I love it. We have everything that we need in life uh, revealed to us by our creator in his word. Just going through all this, I'm just like, amen. Like that's awesome that we are just not thrown into this world to figure out life on our own. We have a creator that loves us, that cares for us and uh, has given us his word. Um, just to show that he loves us and he cares and he wants us to know what our, our purpose is. Okay, so the first uh, five books um, are history of what happened, history, right? So the first four are the gospel, all right? And then we're gonna go into the fifth one, but the first four are the gospels, sorry, the gospels, okay? Um, and they are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Each written, each um, has an account of Christ and his life and what he did, and they each have a purpose as to why they were written. And I think I just kind of want to sneak this in here because um, I love how this is just even more proof of Christ's ex 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 oh, Christ's existence um, and his purpose. Like you have four testimonies. Nowadays, like in a court of law, you just you need one, two would be great, three would be amazing. The Lord made sure, God made sure that we had four uh, testaments we've written. There were a lot more because the Bible says that over 500 people saw Christ even after he resurrected, etc. And were, um, and even thousands more, like thousands were um, knew of him and experienced his ministry. Uh, but here we have four concrete um, stories, gospels of the life of Christ. They're all unique. Um, and the stories coincide with each other. And so, awesome. A lot of, well, they're not specific in the sense that they can explain it um, in their own personalities, how they saw it, etc. but they all the events line up. Again, further confirming just the life of Christ and his ministry, okay? So the first one is Matthew. Matthew, um, you see the life of Christ written specially for Jews. Um, revealing Jesus Christ as their long-awaited Messiah. So just how it's written, the themes, the um, minor themes that you see in this book, obviously the major theme is Christ, but you can see this was specifically written for the Jews. Uh, Matthew, Mark, you see, which is actually the book that I'm reading right now in my quiet time. Uh, Mark, you see also the life of Christ, but revealing Jesus as the obedient servant of God written specially to the Roman world. So Matthew was written to the Jews. Christ was a Jew when he was here. He came for his people, uh, the long awaited Messiah, who all these prof prophecies were pointing to. Um, but what I love about, you know, God, and he reveals in his word that he's a God of nations, of also Gentiles, uh, meaning he came, yes, to save the Israelites and who would follow him, but also anyone else in the world that would want to believe and follow Christ. So Matthew, Mark, Luke is the next one. So Luke, uh, the life of Christ, revealing Jesus as the perfect man, emphasizing his humanity. Written by Luke, a Greek to the Greek world. So Luke was the physician of the disciples and he wrote this, he again was a Gentile because he was Greek and he wrote it for the Greek world, but also for the Gentiles. And the last one is the book of John, um, which is again, the life of Christ, revealing Jesus as the son of God, um, stressing his deity, 
and it's very evangelistic. So again, it's very heavy on the fact that he was the son of is the son of God. Uh, it is God Himself. Okay. Uh, what two reasons are given for the writings of John's Gospel? Okay, and we see that in John chapter twenty, verse thirty-one. And I'm actually going to read, uh, yeah, chapter twenty, verse thirty-one. I'm going to read verse thirty-two, so we can kind of know. Um, and the title of the section is the purpose of this book. It says, now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, meaning here we see a lot of all, like not all of them, but. Uh, the majority of his miracles in the ministry of Christ, right? So John is saying, um, now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. Meaning I didn't, I wasn't able to cover all of them because it was just going to be too much. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. That's why this book is evangelistic because it not only states that he, uh, that he is Christ, but by believing in him, you shall be saved. So here asks, what are the two reasons for the book of John? Number one, to, like I said, to believe in Jesus Christ, the son of God, and by believing in him, you may have life in his name. The next one is Acts, uh, the history of the early church, uh, which was also written by Luke. And here you see the beginning of the spread of Christian, the Christian church. It could be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit, which is how the Holy Spirit descends, um, just like Jesus predicted, saying, I'm leaving, but I'm leaving uh, someone behind to guide you, to lead you. And it is his spirit in, this, in essence, because it is God's spirit and Christ was God or is God. So the Acts of the Holy Spirit uh, was written also as an evangelistic tool. Um, letters or epistles, uh, there are 21 left in the, here in the, in the New Testament and letters are just pretty much, um, an apostle wrote out, um, letters to each other. Well, let me just read it here. It says these books were written to individuals, to churches or to believers in general. The letters deal with every aspect of Christian faith and responsibility. I love that they went through these churches and these people went through circumstances and hardship, um, and one of the reasons why is so that we could know about it and we could be encouraged and uh, there's nothing new under the sun. We're going to have the same struggles and God was so amazing to be able to have him jot down all these advices lead, being led by his spirit. So now in 2023, we can read it and we can be edified. Um, so Paul's letter, uh, Paul was uh, the main writer in the New Testament. Um, and there was, I mean, we can, I'm sure he's going to cover the life of Paul later on, but he was very unique. Um, and so he's, his letters were Romans, first and second Corinthians, uh, Galatians, Ephesians, um, Ephesians, Philippians, uh, Colossians, first and second Thessalonians, um, first and second Timothy, Titus and Philemon. Okay. Those were the 13 books that Paul wrote. Um, then you have general letters written by other apostles, uh, which is Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd and 3rd John and Jude. Okay. And the last one is the prophecy book. The last book of the New Testament tells of future events, the return of Christ, the reign of Jesus Christ, the glory of Jesus Christ. And this book is the book of Revelation. And it was written by, um, by John, which was also one of the apostles wrote the John that we were talking about, um, uh, that we read the verse, uh, where it says that we are to believe and by his, by believing his name, we shall have life. Um, and he wrote it in an island called Patmos and he, uh, passed there. He, he died there. Uh, but again, it's a book, um, where we see future, the future state of believers and on and unbelievers. So it's awesome how we were able to have a collection of books. There's reasons for each and every one of them. And uh, I'm excited to dive in with you guys. All right, guys. So that's about it for today. Next week, we are going to do Christ in the Bible in the New Testament. Um, and hopefully, yeah, we'll, we'll continue growing. And I'm also reviewing all this along with you. And so it's been a, a blessing for me to go through it uh, once again with you all. All right, guys. Stay tuned for a few messages for myself. Love you all. And I will see you on my next video. Bye. Hello friends, thank you so much for checking my videos out. Um, it really does mean the world to me that you guys take the time to watch them. I put a lot of time and effort and I have so much fun with them. And so it means a lot that you guys are actually taking the time to watch them. Um, just wanted to share a few things with you all. It won't take long at all, I promise. 
Number one, um, I accept prayer requests. Um, if there's anything that you are going through, anything that you would like for me to pray uh, over, um, just go ahead and contact me. Uh, my email is below. You can also contact me through social media, uh, even uh, through the comments section here in this video, and I will go ahead and add you to a prayer list that I pray over. And I would love to have a conversation with you and even share what my faith is about and why I pray um, and all that good stuff. So just go ahead and contact me if that is something that you would like to do. Uh, number two, if you are on social media, you should totally be following me because I share a lot more content there. I do videos here and I post them and I have fun, but over there, especially on social media on Instagram, I share a lot more of like my family, my life, things that I do on the everyday basis, especially in the Instagram stories. Um, so go ahead and follow me. There will be a link to my uh, Instagram handler below. So you can click on it and uh, it'll take you right uh, to there. And number three is if you're not part of this family, go ahead and subscribe and uh, hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video, whether it's makeup, um, a recipe, a Bible study, etc. Just go ahead and join us. Uh, we have so much fun here. Like I said, I have fun filming these videos and I would love for you guys to join our fam. All right, guys, that's about it. Thank you so much. Love you all.